what's going on YouTube this is Steel Mills Boxing man checking back in with your bread dreams man but um I want to dive into I was thinking about a topic last night and it's, it's actually a topic that's been you know irritating the fuck out of me for the past I don't know how long since it's been discussed but Earl Spence jumping up to fight Canelo Alvarez at middleweight at full fledged middleweight man and um I just can't see it happening, man. Like, Earl Spence is, you know, he's really good when he's in a position to take, take the pace, fight at the pace that he wants to fight at, fight at the distance that he wants to fight at. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he looks impeccable when he's in that type of element, man. But the minute, you, the minute you take that away from him and he's forced to adjust, I've yet to see him make adjustments on the fly. I haven't. Even when, you know, like I said before, when he fought Kell Brook, he didn't make adjustments to that. He, you know, he, he was able to outfight him. That's not an adjustment to me. That's just fighting. You keep going on and eventually what you're doing, so you know, it bears good fruit because your, your opponent is wearing down. And Kell Brook was just off of a fight at a, in, a, in two divisions north of the division that he normally fought in or he was a champion in. And then when he shot, fought Sean Porter, he persevered with Sean Porter. He's bigger than Porter. He hits harder than Porter. So, and a lot of people still think he lost that fight. I'm still conflicted on it. So, you haven't necessarily proven that you're the best in the division. You haven't, you know, you, you the, the, the shit he keeps doing with Crawford, how he give, keeps giving that nigga to run around. How you know what make what gives you the inclination that you're ready to jump up and fight a Canelo? You haven't fought Thurman either. Now I can't blame you for not wanting to fight Thurman. You know Thurman. You know he's one of my favorite fighters. But he would that was some sucker shit how he did you. You know what I'm saying? And Crawford, even with Sean Porter, you know they they didn't want to say Bud. They didn't want to admit as much as mention Bud's name. But now that they're no longer champions, all right, cool, Bud, let's run that. But with Spence, he, and he, you know, he wouldn't even as much as acknowledge you. You know, he gave you the run around, and he didn't get his confidence until he seen him against Sean Porter. Because he had Porter not, he had Porter getting stopped by Earl Spence. That's how highly he thought of Earl Spence, and that's how every how highly everybody thought of Earl Spence when he was fighting the competition of cats that he was fighting. Not, you know, he was like, oh, shit, this dude is, a, you know, this dude is a monster, and he's a cat who could potentially could potentially take everything that I've worked for away from me if I go in there and fight this dude because you know, the likelihood of him knocking me out is very high. And when he went in there and he fought Sean Porter, it was like, whoa, maybe he's not the demon that everybody thought he was. And that's how I feel about it. So when you talk about jumping up two divisions to go fight Canelo Alvarez, like what, what exactly do you think you bring to the table that's gonna work Canelo Alvarez? Especially considering how he did Golovkin, Callum Smith, and and, and and Danny Jacobs. Dudes who are bigger than you. Even the heirs, Landy Lara. Look at how he did him. I think Lara won the fight. But I understand why Canelo won as well. What are you going to do to thwart Canelo Alvarez's forward effective aggression? It's literally nothing that you can do. You need dimension. There's like there's no dimensions in Earl Spence's game. There's no dimensions. Come forward and shoot the jab. He has a really incredible jab. How he, he broke Danny Garcia down off the jab. That was good. That was really good. He has a really, 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 really good jab. Really good jab. The minute you take his jab away from him, what else does he have? I don't see him catching Canelo with the jab. Is he catching Canelo with the jab? No. He's not. And the minute your jab starts getting slipped and you start countering to the body, what are you going to do? So that's just, that's, that's how I feel about it, man. Um, you need to, you know, it's no head movement. His head is online all the time. It's going online. He doesn't move his head. You know what I'm saying? Even when, you know, and I think... Derek James trains him like that, where he catches a lot of the shots. Because when you watch them throw mitts, it's like you know they're in, they're they're in so they're in unison with each other so much that they're not throwing. 
he the, he's catching everything and he's shooting off of the shot he's catching and shooting back catching and shooting back catching and shooting back and Derek James is just, he's not telling them all right one two one two step back throw the left uppercut he is there's none of that he puts his hand he puts the mitt in a specific position and Spence knows what to what what punch to throw and when Derek James throws a shot back he's you know his hands are always up in punching position or in defend or in position to defend himself and that's dope like I, I I enjoy watching him on the mids more so than any active fighter or any fighter in general that I've probably ever seen because it's like it's, it's you know when they say say no more that's the epitome of it he don't they don't say shit they just they're literally just in there they know what to do he doesn't I don't even think he does that with your mail but you're not about to sit there and catch shots from Canelo you're not because those shots are eventually going to start to find that little pocket behind the behind the guard and in front of the guard Canelo has an incredible you think your jab is good yikes yikes and you haven't you haven't dealt with no defensive fight you haven't you haven't you haven't fought a counter country you know what I'm saying you haven't fought a you haven't fought a, a fighter who can set traps you haven't fought you it's this 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 you haven't fought a cat with the intangibles that Canelo brings to the table. You haven't. You haven't. Your most difficult task to this far was the Sean Porter. It was. Because, you, you know, he had you looking like a deer in the headlights. So when you, fought, when you fight a nigga like Canelo, you're not going to be able to dictate, the, you know, dictate the pace you're not going to be able to fight at your distance he's gonna move he's gonna get in your chest he's gonna get in your chest the difference you know canelo doesn't have sean porter's footwork but he had he's 10 times the puncher that sean porter is and he's bigger than sean Porter. you're not going to be able to just throw him all over the place you're not going to be able to back him up what are you going to do when you get in the clinch what are you going to do He's launching hooks up, hooks downstairs, and hooks upstairs. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen you with you know, uh, uh, um, countering a dude who's coming, you know, who, you know, who's dropping his level to get to your body. I haven't seen you do that. I haven't seen you counter the uh, the body shot with the uppercut. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. It's not like when you get in the phone booth, it's like it's not, you know, you're not, it's not calculated what you're doing in the phone booth. Because nobody is forcing you to fight like that. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's fight. You're going, you know, you're just fighting. You get in here and just, all right, cool, you right here, fuck it, let me just throw. It's, a, it's, it's you're not as poised as you are when you're at mid distance. So when somebody gets in your chest, it's just little shit. I don't see you rolling under shots, rolling under hooks. You know what I'm saying? To uh, uh, um, I, I don't see you doing that. And countering off of those, you know, countering off those hooks that they're that you're rolling. I don't see that. I don't see you pity patting shots and you know to set up a big shot. I don't. I don't see that shit. I don't. I don't see that shit. I don't see you fighting for leverage and for fight for position in the clinch. I, I don't see that shit. I do not see that in the clinch from you. That's where Canelo was. That's the type of fight you're gonna fight when you're in there with Canelo. You're not gonna be able to keep him at bay with the jab. It's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. That dude stood in front of Golovkin for 12 rounds. You're not gonna be able to keep Canelo at bay with the jab. You're not gonna back him up to the rope. You're not gonna be able to do that. I don't even. The fight isn't gonna stay mid ring. So he's gonna control all the real estate in the ring. He's gonna back you to the rope. And if it does, if he doesn't back you to the rope, it's because, all right, cool. You're no longer a threat of coming forward, so I can stay right here and just pick my shots. What are you gonna do to deal with a Canelo? I don't see his, I don't see nothing that you can do to deal with that dude. It's, it's, you know, and you know, one thing I've noticed that a lot of your fans, though, that his fans, because I'm rooting for the brother. You know, after you coming from that, you know, that car crash, you know, man, that was gruesome, man. That was gruesome. You just, you know, you got a baby now. 
I'm glad to see you refocus. I'm, 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 I'm overjoyed to see that, man. I, I don't want to see a brother go out like that, you know what I'm saying, and leave his, his, you know, his, his children to go, you know, to grow up without a father. You know, my Rello died in a car crash back in 2012, and it's, it was fucked up. So I'm glad that you're, you know, I, I was rooting for you in your last fight. I'm not the biggest fan of, of, of Earl Spence, but... You know, I, I recognize the, the dopeness in him, but you know, it, it, you know, his his fans and how the PBC pushes him. That I'm, it, it bothers me, you dig? Because they didn't before it was Earl Spence, it was Keith Thurman running the trap. He was running the PP, the PBC bando, and they did not push Keith Thurman the way that they put before before Earl Spence had even gotten a position where he was in title contention. They were talking about Earl Spence. Earl, he was a prospect still. So they just completely did. Ah, oh, yeah, all right, cool. You, 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 you have for the time being with Keith Thurman, and they just completely disregarded his accomplishments and all that he did for them, and just started pushing Earl Spence, and even Bud. It was a talk. It was talks of Bud and Spence before, while Thurman was still doing the damn thing. This is before he went down with an injury and was sidelined for two years. So I, I I noticed that there's certain fighters that they push they don't push J Rock like that they'll push you know they push the Charlos they push Earl Spence and they tried to push Wilder and it's like all right y'all come on man like he dig I think as far as skill set is concerned Thurman is the dopest even a J Rock J Rock is done now granted he's been knocked out a couple of times he's been but that goes back to what I was saying you know on another video you dig. All, you're gonna lose that shit is the likelihood of that happening is highly you know it's very likely so as far as him jumping up two divisions to fight or you know to fight a Canelo Alvarez when you haven't <clears throat> you haven't even you know you haven't you haven't cleared out the division you haven't cleared out the division and you haven't even had a fight in this stage in your career at 154 Canelo Alvarez is fighting at 168 I don't think you have the goods to go up there and deal with a Canelo Alvarez. I don't think he, I would. I would like to see you with uh, Ares Landy Lara or something like that <clears throat> to really gauge where you would, you know, where your standing would be in those higher divisions. Or a J Rock. What are you gonna do against J Rock? J Rock is an incredibly technically sound boxer. Can you deal with a J Rock and what that man brings to the table? At 54, before we even talk about 60, man, I don't know, homie. Actually, I do know. Nah, you can't. Not with no J Rock, because it's just certain intent. Like you know, if 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 Derek James started, if he started working on head movement drills with you, it'd be a different ball game, man. Because I think on, you know, as far as strength goes, you're strong, and you you know you pack a punch pack a punch i wouldn't doubt that you can tangle with them cats up there all power alone but it isn't just you know it isn't just power when you start moving up in them divisions you're not going to be the taller fighter like you are i said at, 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 at uh what you gonna call it at 47 you're gonna be the small you're gonna be the shorter dude and them cats know how to use their height up there J rock knows how to use his height up there nigga damn near six foot you think this is gonna let you walk him down? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think so. It, no. No. Even when you when you watch the Charlo fight, Charlo was getting out by in them round in them little rounds that it went. Charlo was getting exposed. He called him. He persevered. He timed him. He called him with that uppercut and got him the fuck up by even the jab in the first round. His jab is crucial. The jab is crucial. So I don't know, man. Um. Canelo, bro, nah, I don't see that happening. I think you get your, I, I think Canelo, I think Canelo would beat years off of Spence's career. That's how bad I think of a beating that would be if he was to go up and fight Canelo Alvarez. Is just too big of a, not even just a size, it's a size difference, but it's also a gap in skill. You know, when they, they say Spence is special, I don't think he's special personally. I think he's really good. I don't think he's special though. 
was even when I was watching him against Danny Garcia, it was how he would defend the body shot. He would drop both of his arms. He would drop both of his arms like this and like, you know, poke his, you know, his body out to, you know what I'm saying, to, 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 to create some sort of distance between his body and the shot, despite the fact that he's dropping his guard and catching it on the elbow. But the difference is, Danny Garcia was letting you know he was throwing to the body. And he would throw to the body. He wouldn't faint. I didn't see too many faints and left hooks from Danny Garcia, up top at least. Couldn't, one of Canelo Alvarez's best punches is his lead left hook. How he faints, how he faints it. He, he flashes it to the body, but he, you know, he switches it up to the top of your head. If you, if you completely compromise your guard like that against a Canelo Alvarez, you're possibly going to sleep. The way he dropped your guard against a Danny Garcia, like that, when it was time to defend the body shot, if he faints to the body and comes up top with that left hook, bro, how are you going to respond to that? I just don't see it happening, man. I just, I think, um, move up gradually if you want to move up. And even when you do move up, Canelo ain't the move, man. Canelo ain't the move. <clears throat> the only reason why I would say Lar, because Lar is a lot more elusive and fleet-footed than Canelo is. Lar is a little bit older. And he's, you know, he's not the puncher that Canelo is. So you're not, it's not like you're about to get knocked out. He's very economical with his shots. He's not going to load up. He's not going to throw four and five punch combinations. He's not. So I don't, I don't see, I don't see you dealing with a Canelo. I don't see that. Laura, all right. Laura. Just send somebody like that. You're not going to fight Jermail. That's your, you know, that's your homeboy from your, you know, from your stay, your stable mates. Who else is up there? J-Rock. Nick Daniel Gallimore. Castaño. You know, people of that elk. And these are solid fighters. You know, it's no shade at them. It's no, it's no shade at them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not throwing shade or nothing like that. You, are you going to, I mean, oh, uh, 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 Tony Harrison. <laughs> Tony Harrison will come and find you. He'll come and find you. Why not get in there and mix with a, the likes of a Tony Harrison and really gauge where you at and see how you can deal with them, you know, in the in the in the in the higher divisions. He'll come and find you. He'll come and find you the same way he came and found he found Jamel Charlo. And had success until he got goofy in there. But Canelo, nah, man. I think you need to stay away from that fight, man, because it, it, I, I just it's too many there's too many dimensions of Canelo's game, man. It's way too it's too he's too elusive on the front foot. He's not elusive like you know Laura is on the back foot. He's elusive on the front foot. I just nah, homie. So that's my spill on it. That's how I'm feeling. Like I said, like, subscribe to the video. Steel Mills Box, and I'm out of here.